Hey, what's up Blender users, I'm Jonathan and today's video is probably going to be the last video about terrain generation because there's just one more thing I want to address and this is custom height map erosion. In last week's video I showed you how to set up and use this GitHub repository with Anaconda but there was one issue with both the simulation and rivernetwork.py file. They don't use inputs but fully generate you a height map from the ground up. So let's change that. Oh and by the way, if you enjoy my content, consider subscribing because I upload a new video every Saturday. And with that said, let's get started. Okay, firstly, I want to clean up this repository, because for this tutorial we'll only be needing the util, simulation and make grayscale image.py files. So let's delete everything else. Great. Now to import custom height maps, we will have to adjust the simulation code. So let's right click and open it with your favorite text editor. For me, this is going to be Visual Studio. Now you can see that right here we have our dimensions for the output image. And if we scroll down, we have our terrain variable. This terrain variable stores the height map before the erosion process. So we have to import our custom height map right here. But because I want to take the dimensions of our custom input and assign it to the dimension variable, we will be importing our image at the start right here. To open images in Python, we will need a special module, which is called Pillow. If you followed last week's tutorial about setting up Anaconda, we should already have this installed. So we can type in from pill import image. And this should now work. Right now we will hard code an image input. This means that we will have to drag our height map into this folder and specify the name in the code. So let's create a new image variable to assign our image. So give it a name and type in equals image dot open and then your image name, which is for me just going to be input dot png and after that dot convert l. The following code uses numpy arrays, so we will have to convert this image into one. numpy is already imported, so we can just create a new variable. And for me this is going to be image as numpy. And now because we have imported numpy as np, we will write np dot as array and then specify our newly imported image, right here. This numpy array now assigns every pixel a value between 0 and 255. But this terrain variable uses values between 0 and 1. So we will have to remap our numpy array. So how do we do that? Well, it's actually pretty simple. We can just divide every value by 255. So again, type in numpy dot true underscore divide and then use our array comma 255. Now we only need to set the correct output size and this is again specified in the dimension variable. And to do this we can just get our numpy array which is actually an array that contains multiple arrays and basically one array for each row and each array again contains values for each pixel in a row. And that way we can easily figure out the dimensions by just taking the overall array which is specified by the zero and then type in dot size. This should take care of our dimensions. And with these few lines of code, we should be able to use custom height maps as our input. Okay, then let's test it. Let's quickly hop over to Blender and create a custom height map. For this, I'll be using the landscape add-on and the canyon preset. Now let's add in a camera, clear out the rotation and move it up. Let's also switch over to cycles and use a resolution of 512 and now let's switch our camera to orthographic and give it an orthographic scale of 2. To now export the height map we will have to go into the shader editor, select our terrain and give it a new material and now use the geometry node as well as a separate XYZ node to get the Z position of our map. With node wrangler enabled we can just shift click on the separate XYZ node until we preview the Z output and now you can see that this is our height map. Okay, let's render it out and save it inside of our folder. 
Now remember, we specified that our image has to have the name input.png, so let's rename our height map to this. Inside the condo terminal, we can now switch over to our directory and now type in python and simulation.py. And this should work, but you can see that I, for this tutorial, have way too many iterations, so I will stop it right here and go back into the code and adjust our iteration value. For now, I will hard code it to 10, so this should be pretty fast. And again, let's start our simulation file. And you can see that everything works fine. We now have our simulation output. And to convert it to a grayscale image, we will have to type Python make grayscale image.py and use our simulation.npy file as our first argument and specify an output image, which is for me going to be out.tiff. Now let's run it and you can see that it has simulated based on our input image. Now this is great but it is not really practical because you will always have to rename your images into input.png and also only use this folder. So that's why I have created this little UI file and if we'd go ahead and run it you can see that I have created a working GUI for this program. This means we can just press these buttons and for example select an input image as well as specify an output path and then specify an iteration number. I found that values between 500 and 700 work fine for every resolution. And now we could just press simulate and it would export a TIFF file to the selected output path. And after that you can use the methods I showed you in last week's tutorial to texture the terrain using masks from the ANT landscape add-on and then create beautiful terrain scenes in Blender completely for free. You can also pair it with add-ons, for example, Scatter, to quickly create foliage for your render. And Scatter even supports slope maps, which means for this terrain right here, I was able to only scatter grass on these flat surfaces. And that's it. This is how you can easily generate terrain for free with Python and Blender. And I hope this tutorial was helpful. I hope you learned something. If you did, consider liking and subscribing. And we will see you in the next video, next Saturday.